Worship your friends and worship the Lord. Thank Him for His love.
Sara Sara Dila Sa Ora Dino Sara Mantali Gaba Shasatakaba Rabba Sonke Lagaba Rabba Dele Sataki Malagaba O Sara Mante de Gibraba Satakaba Ora Nina Sara Diaba Liba Santele Gibradila Sosatakaba O
Once more come to this glorious service, I'd like to encourage you to invite your friends, your family members to be part of this program. I promise you it will make a glorious impact in your life now and forever. You will forever be grateful that you listen to these teachings. Let us pray to prepare our hearts and our spirits to receive the word of God. O Jean Tali Baze Bradike Bon Talabali Pradi Hashti, Joski La Man Talabali Bradi de Bon Talabaha, Vazoski La Antili Prapor Diski Li Clanoj de Libahanta, Lopeski the Hante Long Granira Paradiski La Doski Bahai, Zatila Bonta Akratile Pentoski Libashanta, Lanteli Gruz de Libra Male Doski La Ai, Barahaski Doski Libashanta, Jamaski La Apratiros Kiba Anta, Monta Liba Zibra de Libushanta. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your word. We receive your word with joy and gladness in our hearts, O God. I declare that our minds and our hearts are open to receive the word of God. And this word will bring a long-lasting change in our lives, O God. I pray that the ministry of the Holy Spirit will be so active in our lives today. I pray that we'll have his way in our lives, O God. And as many as are listening to this word, their lives will be greatly, greatly changed, transformed to the glory of your holy name. O Jean Tabale Gradire Boshanta, Man Taliba Zebra Dide Bosha, Bale Gradira Paratus Kila Antele Kladush Telebashanta, Mount Tala Angrodira Baskila Hando Bomplico Skabahai. That every expectation will be met, O God, that every sickness goes, every opportunity that your people are expecting to, to see and experience, O God, is coming their way in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for your word. We receive it with joy and excitement in our hearts in Jesus' name. And all of us say amen. Praise the Lord. I'd like us to continue with the series that I began a few days ago on who is a Christian. No. You can't use that as an opportunity for you to continue living in sin. It should give you the joy that I'm ever in God's presence. I'm always in his presence. He takes care of, is it people say, well, you know, pastor, you sin when you are walking, when you are looking, when you are thinking. Now, those things are taken care of the grace of, the grace of God comes to cancel out those things. So you cannot live with the conscience of sin. A Christian is not one that lives the consciousness of sin through and through. No. A Christian is not one that lives with sin consciousness. No. No. And we see this. No. So the fact that grace is ever increasing is not an opportunity for you to th start thinking sin. No. Sin is something you detest. Your spirit detests. That's why you, as a Christian, you speak Christ out to God. See, when a sinner sins, he's not conscious he's sinning. It, it is his way of life. But you, as a Christian, when you commit something wrong, you spend screams unto God. You are so conscious that I did something wrong and it is haunting me. It is, it is, it is, a, there is, 
this, uh, I swear that he's telling me, no, this is not right. But when a sinner does something wrong, ah, it's their way of life. They don't feel it. It is when they do something right. That's when they are like, what, today? Ah, today I was given excess change in the, in the shop, and I didn't, I returned it to the shopkeeper. They feel like they have done something great. But when you do it as a Christian, it's your way of life. You're born to do right. You don't even recognize you've done it. It's your way of life. You live right. So on the other hand, when a sinner does something right, they, they recognize they've done something right. No. But when they sin, it, it's their way. It's, they don't feel anything. Wait until you do something outside the word of God. Your spirit will be crying. You'll be like, oh God, forgive me. I've done something. Because your spirit is alive unto God. And it is not, it cannot condone something that is wrong. That is something that is sinful. So, for we, look at what happened. It says, for we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives, right? May live new lives. The, the King James Version says, we have the newness of life. It's not just a new life, but there's a newness. It's a, it's a God kind of life. So a Christian is one, I told you, is the one that has eternal life. And this life does not coexist with human life. Uh -uh. It is eternal life, which can only be found in God. It's only found in God. Since therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we so should walk in the newness of life. I love this. We should walk in the newness of life. The newness of life. A Christian does not have only a new life. This is the newness of that life. A newness of that life. It is not subject to sin. Look, let's continue with this. this is, we'll, we'll, we'll stay in this chapter for a while. For a while. So by the end of this teaching, you should be able to get yourself and see, really, are you a Christian? Or you're just a religious person? It says, for we have been planted together in the likeness of his, 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 uh, his death. We shall be also... So for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Did you see that? Oh my God. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Have you been planted? Yes, you've, you know you've died with him. The Bible says as he is, because you know you've been planted with him and raised together with him. The Bible says as he is, so are we in this world. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Verse 6. Knowing this, what is that he's saying? That knowing this, it means having understood what I've just said in the previous verses, knowing this, that our old man, this, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Our old man is crucified. When he says our old man is crucified, he's not your old man as your father. He's talking about the old man of sin. He says the old man, when he says my old man, it's not Paul's old man. The father, no. He says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That's the man of sin. That's the old you that was sinful. He says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might stay with you. No. He says, that the body of sin might be destroyed. Dear Lord Jesus, the body of sin might be destroyed. The body that had capacity to sin has been destroyed. That's a Christian. That's a Christian. No, I'm reading from your Bible. You've always had that Bible. It says that knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. Why does he use the word might be destroyed? Because God does not force something into his people. They have to make a choice. So it is you now to take what God has already 
accomplished for you. The body of sin, the power to sin is not in you, but it's a choice. You have to make a choice. So he's knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. Was he crucified? Yes. Has the body of sin been destroyed? Yes. So you have no capacity to continue sinning. That's why John wrote and said that whoever is born of God cannot sin. Why? For the seed of God remains in him. Pastor, there are many Christians that I know that sin. That is you. God doesn't know that. He is not in the knowledge of God. God is not aware. God is not aware. It's like having that uh, an equipment. And you use it for a wrong purpose. The fact you're using it for a wrong purpose doesn't mean the manufacturer intended it to be used for that. For example, this drum set, some might look at it and decide, we're going to use it to put water. It, it doesn't, it, this way we'll be storing water. It looks like a drum, but it's for water. So they put water. Does it mean its purpose has changed? No. The manufacturer is not aware that it is con, it's, it's doing that kind of, you ask the manufacturer, uh, when you go to him and say, what is it for? Uh, it's for playing music and all that. But you buy it for that purpose, then you go and use it for another purpose. He's not aware. And if you tell him he cannot even, he cannot imagine that it can be used for that purpose. That's how you are. The Bible says we are God's workmanship. We are God's masterpiece. Finished product. So you are a product of God. And this product that God has manufactured, he knows it cannot sin. So are you going to challenge him because you, you are deviating from his? No, he is not aware. You say God knows everything. He's not aware you can do that. He's not aware you can walk on your head. If someone starts walking on his head, it's, it's abnormal. So the Bible says, whatsoever, that's First John 3, 9. Listen to me, theologians. He says, whatsoever is born of God does not commit sin. Put it in a simple English so that they don't say, well, that's English, that's King James. No, put the new, the new King James. No one who is born of, he says, whoever has been born of God does not lepaye, montala hakre, peloske le gradida montala bahai. This is the truth that every Christian should know. He says, he says, whoever has been born of God, you know our time has come in our faith that the true worshippers of God should be known. If you are just a religious folk, then this is not your, this is not your, this is not your thing. It's not your thing. If you are the type that is running away from a virus, just a virus, a virus whose origin, whose existence is questionable. You have to be examined to be told when you're all driving your truck and feeling good, you know, information is power. When you receive that information, even if you are not sick, the, the information will create it. They examine you all along, you are very well. When they test you with that thing, you're told, hey, you're positive. At that moment, you're just feeling coughing, chain, pain on your chest. What is it? What is it? Information has come. You know, let me tell you something. I may tell the world something. There's a principle in the word of God. And the word of God is the wisdom of God. There's a principle of looking. It says, as you behold something, as you behold the word of God, you become it. Also, when you behold an image that is destructive and sinful, you become it. Honest, I don't like what is happening. I've stopped watching our news because every time the TV, they put that virus behind the, the, the broadcaster. So what is happening is the country is beholding the image of the virus daily, minute by minute, hour by hour. Before you know it, it has become created in their spirits. And before you know it, there is a huge population that is carrying this thing. It's a principle in the word of God. We are not being spirits. It is, this is not 
making everything spiritual. It's real. It's real. See, when you start showing on TV or newspapers how schools are burning, being burned down, you see the thing starts, the intensity of the destruction becomes higher and higher. If you deny that, in, if that information is not passed on, you will not hear schools burning everywhere. It's the same principle. It's the same principle. You say you want people to be careful, but there is some destructive, there's some, something destructive happening in the spirit of men that as they behold that virus every day, fear creeps them. And fear, fear diminishes, causes their immunity to, re, to go down. And when that virus strikes, it will strike so hard. That's it. That's it. If they keep quiet, if, what is the science be, behind the briefing every other day? Is this a science? That information creeps the, gets hold of the spirits of men. And fear sets in. Just like I said, when you go out to the supermarket and you see all these Everybody covering his mouth. Does it inspire faith? Is it inspiring faith? No. It doesn't inspire faith. It shows, it speaks terror and fear. And that's what they want. That's all in the book. That's the playbook. That's what they want. But if I don't tell you this, I will fail as a minister of God. You should make sure that your faith is at its best. I refuse fear. You are, some leaders are quoting government like it is the Bible. Government, what is a democratic government? We say it is a government by the people, for the people. I mean, it's for the people. It's people originate. It's, it's origin, even though God recognizes, but it does, cannot take the place of God. It cannot. So there is what government says, there is what God says. As I said, in December, he prophesied, Pastor Chris said, that the advancement of work of man will come into collision with the work of God. And that is where we are now. That's where we are now. A virus manufactured in Wuhan is, is, is causing the houses of God to be closed. Only those people that are spiritual would reject this kind of thing. And I say this, I, I can be quoted anywhere. I am not afraid to say this. Our African states, they are in a siege. They've been captured. Our head of states are not making, they're not making independent decisions. They're being advised by the so-called experts. But we didn't vote the experts. The experts don't have the blessings of God on them as the leaders of the countries. So when the president stands and said, it's not me who came up with this decision, it is the experts. It makes me wonder, then who is leading? Who are the experts? We don't know their names. We don't know what they are. We don't know what they are after. We voted the president. It doesn't inspire hope. that somebody else who we don't know whether he has the interest of our country, he's making a decision on our behalf. And say, no, another 21 days, another 21 days. And you want us to clap for you and celebrate. We're not celebrating. I say, Pastor, no, 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 don't attack the government. I'm not attacking the government. I'm just talking about, this is the truth. It's the truth. If there's not siege, who is making these decisions? It's, it's a logical thing that the WHO has said this thing is here to stay. True or false? True. So, we've copied communist ways of doing things and brought them into a democratic state. Lockdowns, curfews. You know, in China, they, are, they have no respect to human freedoms. And a lot of what we're doing today in democratic states is borrowed from China. 
And there's a lot of wickedness in China. And they don't love God. They hate God. So they have no respect for church. All these things. You ask, how does, how does lockdown, how does curfew, what does it have to do with the virus? What does staying at home have to do with the virus? If it is not dealing with the immune of people and it goes down and down, 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 and they become, they're not able to, basic science shows that when you are exposed to some virus, you, you, you develop immunity. You develop, so when you stay in the house, your immunity goes down, 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 down. So I don't understand all these things. And all of them, make no mistake, all of them, people might be doing it with sincere heart. And not everything you do with sincere heart that is of God. Not every truth is from God. I told you of that lady, that lady that used to follow Paul, and every time she was shouting, these are the servants of the Most High God. Was they no servants of the Most High God? He kept on saying, they have come to show you the way of salvation. But Paul turned around and rebuked the devil. He cast out that devil. It was that devil speaking. People can be, appear to be speaking the truth, but it is, all, it is all works of Satan. These unseen enemies that you're dealing with is demonic. And I can prove it. I can prove it to you. All that it is achieving is, you see, when you look at the trade of things, you see, we have no problem with the brewers, the beers, guys that are selling beer. We've no problem with cigarette people. We've no problem with people that are selling food. But we have a big problem with people gathering in church. We've no problem with supermarkets. We've no problem with all those things. But we have a big problem when it comes to the church of Christ. And you think it's a wise decision. It's a wise decision. It is experts that have given that decision. What spirit is behind them? You, 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 you. Do you love the church more than God? Are you the one who has been assigned the role to protect the church of Christ by God? Are you the shepherd of the church? The church is a congregation of God. And he has a better way to take care of it. I can challenge the government. If they open the churches and people go and fellowship and they worship God, this thing will go down completely flat. And because they think all these their models are working, let, them, let us see. Let us see. But as long as the church is around, they will have to open. They will have to open. They will pray. They will have to open. Okay, let's, let's go back to Romans. But did I finish that scripture in, in John? No, I did not. Let's, let's, let's go back there. It says, whatever is born of God doth not commit sin. That's the church. You know, I was talking of, I was talking of whatever information you behold every day, you become it. Because every day you're beholding virus, 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 virus. Briefing, briefing, or scaring people here and there. That's all you're beholding. Fear will just, there is no faith that is being built in you, so fear will just set in. No, we should see something different. We should see some hope. And they don't emphasize on the people that have recovered. They, they see it like it is not an important thing. No, we should emphasize on the people that have recovered. 
and say we have only 400 that are active cases. Every time we are getting that figure that contains the dead ones and the ones who are healed, and they want that big figure, 800 something. That, that's the one they want, the big one. As a pastor, I'm ordained to preach the word of God. I'm not ordained to preach some other destructive information. You cannot hire me to talk about <laughs> sanitizer. No, I'm, I'm, I'm God's servant. I talk about the word. No. You cannot pay me to talk about those things. No, those ones, leave them to scientists. My work is to show you what the Spirit wants you to do. And, and make no mistake. I went to school properly, but I know the word of God works. So, so we all with unveiled face, beholding us in a glass, in, in a mirror, the glory of God are being changed. As you behold the glory of God, you are changed. Transformed into the same image. That is a principle. I'm showing you the principle behind beholding. When you behold the glory of God, you are transformed to the conform to the same image. From glory to glory. Just as by the spirit of the Lord. So by the spirit of Satan, you are conformed to the image of the virus. So you stop showing us. Or if you, they can't stop, stop looking at it. Stop watching it. Some people have become scientists now. They know, they know. <laughs> anyway, let's continue with the word. Let's come to the end of this. Let's look at, we were in Romans, right? Okay, okay, we were in First John 3, 9. See that a Christian, I said he's not a sinner, saved by grace. And sin has no dominion over a Christian. Don't say Christians are just sinners saved by grace. No! That is the world. Salvation has come to them. They have to accept it. If they don't, then that, that's where judgment comes in. Salvation has come to all humanity. It is for them to accept it or reject it. But when you become a Christian, this is your place. This is where we are now. This is our thing. Says whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him. He's, when he talks of his seed, his nature, the nature of God remains in him. And he cannot sin. Emphasis. Whoever is born of God does not sin. Does not sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot, he does not have capacity. Hi. That's the way he's been manufactured. That's the way he's been wired. He cannot sin because he has been born of God. And that takes us to what Ephesians 2.10 says. It says that we are God's workmanship, finished product, created for good works. We are created, we're not created to sin. We, we have no capacity to sin. It is not, see, whatever is born of God does not sin. He cannot sin. Because the seed of God, the nature of God remains in him. Whichever way you want to look at it, that's it. You can argue with the Bible, but that's God's word. Says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Period. God ordained. We should walk in these good works. We should walk in them. This says that we are God's Another one says we are God's masterpiece. That means a finished product created in Christ Jesus. For we are God's, that's the New Living Translation, says, we are God's masterpiece. You are a masterpiece. You are a masterpiece. God did not create you with a place to carry sickness. You are God's finished product. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things which he planned for us long ago. There are things he planned for us. Worshipping him. Healing the sick. Dedicating children. Winning souls. These are things says, so that we can do good things which he planned for us long ago. Speaking the word. Preaching the word. Bringing hope where there is no hope. Bringing faith where there is no faith. Good things which he planned for us. Bringing prosperity where there is poverty. 
That's it. That's it. You're God's masterpiece. A Christian is a workmanship of God. God's masterpiece. That means you have the seal of God on you. You have like, how do I call it? Like you have the trademark. You, you are marked out. God has put a seal on you. The way you manufacture your product and then you put your seal on it, a man that is born again, you have the seal of God. God has said, this is my masterpiece. Quality control. This man is not subject to the devil. Is not subject to Satan. Is not subject to diseases. Is not subject to curses. This man is my masterpiece. Test him. So COVID comes. Find this man is born of God. Another thing comes. This man is born of God. You try to curse him. He cannot be cursed. He's born of God. Labaye. That's a Christian. That's a Christian faith we profess. Leave this drama. People are running away. In the name of we are saving God's people. <laughs> Who told you? You should read the story of the Ark of the Covenant. And you should be very, you should be very careful. Very careful. They are trying to help. It was a good thing. To help the Ark of the Covenant from falling. But a man touched it. And it rekindled God's anger. And God struck him dead. Be careful when you say we are helping God. Who has, called you? Who has ordained you for that? To help. Are you not afraid to say we are helping the church? Helping God? What? Who told you? As those who tried to help God, the ark was in a car and it was, it was about to fall. So the, a guy was like, sincerely wants to help it. But that is not what God does not like. He's allowed things being touched by men that he has not ordained to do that. Who has ordained you to preach to the church? To talk to bishops? Are you not afraid? Anyway, so Bruce I Gradila Ponte le Claduje Paradira Kilo Tuske la Bashanta. Baligura tila angra dira paraduski. Zo bruz te li iglanushte. Baligura tira tiski bahante. Where God lives. The church. A Christian. Is one that is born of God. He's one that is not subject to sin. The sinful nature. Was destroyed. And the newness of life came into place. Christian is, is God's finished product, a masterpiece, carrying the glory of God. He's not seeking God. He has found God. God has found him. And you have been planted in him. He has come to dwell in you. You've become the dwelling place of God. You've become, you're like a shrine. You, you're like the altar of God. You are the dwelling place of God. God has come to make a board in you. You've become the temple of God. You've become the holy of holies. That's a Christian. That's a Christian. You, you cannot fear like the rest of the world. You cannot talk like them. We are not playing the same game. We're not in the same realm. We're not talking the same language. Yes. He the church is the glory of God. Don't you know that? The church is the beauty of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us. Thank you for giving us such a great honor and a privilege. We have the honor to demolish the works of Satan. This honor has been given to the saints. This honor is ours to demolish the works of Satan. This honor is with the saints. He's the child of God. You go to Psalm 149, 5, 6. His honor is ours. His honor is ours. 
Y son las aguas. Says, let the saints be joyful with glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Right? Let's go on. Says, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Where? Go on. Says, this one has been given to us. Go on. Says, to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. Uh huh. To bind their kings with shackles and their leaders with iron chains. Dear Lord Jesus. <laughs> This is a church. To execute judgment written against them. This is a glorious privilege. This is the glorious privilege of the faithful ones. I like another version that says, this is the honor of the saints of God. This is the honor. Yes. This is the honor of all his saints. Praise ye to Lord. To execute upon them the judgment written. This is a judgment written. We're not fools. We, we're God's people. We know what God has expected of us to do. You, you that doesn't know, just keep quiet. Watch this space. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor of all his saints, praise ye to the Lord. We have this privilege. This privilege. This privilege is ours. To execute judgment. Upon them, judgment is written. This honor of all his saints. To bind the devils to cut off their works, to bring in a new aroma, to bring a new fragrance in the world. This honor has been given to the saints of God. This honor is for the Christian. It's for the Christian. To cut off works of Satan from our leaders, to cut off works of Satan from our schools, to cut off the works of Satan from our nations, nations around the world. And make sure only the will of God prevails. Until the church is taken away, then the devil can have his riot around. It's in the book of Thessalonians. It says that until he that led it is taken away, is removed from the way, that's the church, then the Antichrist spirit can set in. But he shouldn't come before his time. His proper time has not come. And I can tell you, God's people, this, all this we're seeing today was a scheme of Satan trying to bring in his beast, his, his Antichrist. He was trying to show up that guy before his time. But we will not allow it. We're not allowing it. With the church of Christ. Jesus said, I'll build my church. And the gates of her shall not prevail against it. I'll build my church. We are that church. We are that church that is so personal to Jesus. He said, I'll build my church. It is his church. Keep off the church of Jesus Christ. He says, for this lawlessness, is already at work secretly. Yes, secretly. It's already at work secretly. Putting some chips on people in Sweden trying to try whether we will accept digital vaccine, ID 2020, it is in operation. This, this, this virus that we have, a, a movie was acted 2003. 2003. It was acted. The, the Antichrist spirit is trying to come secretly. Says for this lawlessness is already at work secretly. It will remain secret. Man talaba libra di kebo shata. Lang ruske libra di rebo Did you read? And China wants to do away with money. They want, to, they want digital, digital currency. No money anymore. They've even removed dollar from their, as the, the unit to check the value of the, their money. So they, they don't recognize the dollar anymore. They're coming up with a new, with a new system, the digital currency. These things, these systems are coming silently and secretly. They're coming in. So before they can be fully full blown, the church will be raptured. That's why you need to give your life to Christ. He's, for this lawlessness is already at work secretly. And it will remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. That is me and the church of Christ. It's the church of Christ. That's me and you. Says until the one who is holding it back, we are pushing away the powers of darkness by the power that is vested in the name of Jesus. We are pushing away those forces. They wanted ten thousand in Kenya to have been infected with this thing. We are not even at one thousand. We are pushing. We are pushing away. They wanted ten million in Africa. 
People dropping dead in the street. Where is it? We are holding those powers at bay. We, we're pushing them back. Says, Until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. That's when they can now set in. That's when the Antichrist can come in. And he will deal with men that have rejected Christ. You'll be looking for Pastor Judah, the one who is nearing you. You don't want to hear him. You'll be looking, where can I hear anyone to lead me to Christ? You'll be even talking to Stone. Stone, fall on me. Please, kill me. Stone will say, I, I can't. I have no capacity. You try to commit suicide, you can't die. No. It will be suffering after suffering after suffering. But you have an opportunity now. This is your time. It's not by accident that you are listening to this, this, this broadcast. It's not an accident. You're listening to this message. You can make a decision to receive Jesus Christ now. Once you receive Jesus, once you receive Jesus, all this, all this tribulation and suffering will not be part of you. You will not be part of it. You will not be part of it. You will not fall in the hands of the Antichrist. He will be lawless, killings, oppressing people. You are talking of COVID-19. There will be 10 times such kind of sicknesses. 10 times. Or even more. The Bible says the pains will be beyond anything has ever been seen. It will be beyond imagination. So this is your time. You can receive Jesus Christ. I'm, I, I always tell, I'm not inviting you to a religion called Christianity. No, I'm inviting you to a person, the person of Jesus Christ who, who died for you. And it was recorded, even by historians, that Jesus Christ came, he was crucified, he was buried, and rose from the dead. All this he did because of you. So I'm giving you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ. This is your hour, this is your time, this is your moment. Do you want to receive Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior, to be your Lord and your personal Savior? If that's the prayer of your heart, this is your time now. You can say this prayer after me. Say it loudly and call your friends to join you in saying this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God and that you died and rose from the dead. I declare from this day that you are my Lord and my Savior. I receive you in my heart. I receive the remission of sin. From today, I'm a child of God. I'm born again. I'm a new creature. Thank you, Jesus, for accepting me. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, now you're born again. You're a child of God. When rapture takes place, you'll be in the first flight. You'll be in the first flight. Flight. Thank you so much for making that decision to accept Lord Jesus Christ. All you have to do is locate our churches across the country and be part of our fellowships, and you'll grow in the Word. You'll grow in the Word. You see, at the end of this uh, program, you see different we show you different locations where you can be part of our fellowships and grow in the faith. So thank you so much. Congratulations. And like I say, this is a fellowship just like any other. It's an opportunity, if you choose to, to give an offering to partner with us in what we're doing for the Lord. So the details to where you can give your offering is at the bottom of the screen. You can join us and Take of the blessings of God as you support his work. I'd like to pray for you, those that are watching and those that have gotten born again, and even those that are giving. Langrus te libra de le bonta, zate li gradira paratis kilo gradira hante, 
le pora hante kada dira pala duje le ikla bonta la bahai pedos kadira hante pala dus ke idos tali angre dire pele tuje le bahai vara dira angle ponta la baski o jes kida hante mo prus te le bahai mos kile kradira pala dis ke le bashanta lang rus te le apratiro tos ke le bashanta i pray for you and the spirit of god will cause you to experience god's blessings that the wisdom of God will be working in you. And the blessings of God come to dwell and abide with you now and forever. And the Lord will preserve and protect you. And he will cause you to walk in his path. Path that he ordained for you before the world began. I pray for you. That you will continue to do those good works. That God preordained for you to do in this world. May you live to fulfill the purpose and the plan of God in your life. Yes, every sickness in your body goes right now. That pain goes. That cancer leaves you. Man shata kabale gradire boza. The cancer is gone. Man taliga ze gradire bo shata la baha. The glory of God fills your house and your life in Jesus' name. And all of us say amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being part of this uh, telecast. I look forward to having another time with you on Wednesday and Friday. And I'm sure these will be, these will be uh, glorious time, your glorious time. Thank you so much. God bless you and have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.